Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I'm going to be talking about processing grief. Um, I'm actually, or might, be losing somebody who I care very deeply about um, in circumstances that I can't do anything about and I'm very far away from them. And to be honest, I wasn't really sure that I was going to make this video today. And it would be the first time since I started doing um, these episodes that I would have missed one. Um, so I decided that I'd share what's going on in my life because that's what I've always done. Um, and it's a lot easier to share the nice things <laughs> than the not so nice things. But with this time of COVID all around the world, I kind of thought there might be many more people going through similar things to what I'm going through. Um, for me, it's not actually COVID related, but COVID makes the whole process a lot harder. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, grief isn't always just about losing a person. It can be about losing a way of life, um, losing your identity of who you are in that life, losing work, routines, all sorts of things. And I just really want to share that. And I'm not going to go through the processes of grief, the different stages of grief, um, I don't remember them specifically, but I'll put a link to them in the notes below. I think the first one is denial, um, and then it might be anger. Um, I can't remember exactly what order they go in. But what I'm going to share with you is what I, what I do to help me process the grief as it comes up. Um, I actually, I lost my little brother many years ago. Um, so it's something that I've experienced before. And I kind of fell into or fell upon the process that I'm going to share with you during that experience. And, and this is not to say that this is like the, the how-to guide. Um, it's more I'm sharing what has worked for me in the hope that it will help you too. <laughs> but the one thing that I definitely have noticed, and this was actually because of my little brother, um, with my father and my other mother, <laughs> when they went through losing him, one of the things that I was just incredibly, I suppose, marvelled at was how losing him actually brought them closer together. And I know that quite often um, when couples lose a child, it can be something that actually tears them apart. And yet with, with mine, it didn't. It brought them closer together. And I think the reason for this was because they both honoured each other's way of grieving. Um, and that's what I really want to stay, say right from the word go. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. There's only your way. Um, some people get very emotional, some people don't. Um, my other mother, she created a garden and she was very, she wanted to talk about it. Um, she wanted to share and remember him. Uh, my father was very different. He he want, he didn't want to have any reminders. He didn't want to listen to music that reminded him of my brother. He didn't want to talk about him. He didn't want to um, find old photos. He just wanted to ignore it and, and, and just couldn't, didn't want to sort of have to be reminded of it. But as I said, the beauty of them was that she didn't make him wrong in what he was doing and he didn't make her wrong in what she was doing. There was almost sort of deep love and respect for each other in what they were going through. And that's what I really want to establish here at the beginning, is that understand that whatever you're going through, whatever it is that you feel you've lost, however you feel about it and however you're dealing with it, be kind to yourself. Don't think that you should be doing it differently. If you're emotional, don't tell yourself that you should be less emotional. If you're not emotional, don't try and make yourself emotional. Just honour your way of doing it and give yourself space and time. Um, the way that I experience it is that it tends to come in waves. So sometimes I can feel perfectly fine and it's as if life is just normal and carrying along. And other times I can feel like just deep, deep pain. Um, and what I do when that happens is I just try to breathe. I try to allow myself to feel whatever is coming up. Um, because to me, it's all energy. And the way I see it is if I try and squash it down and, no and don't feel it, then I'm shutting it and locking it in my body. Whereas if I breathe through it, and when I talk about breathing, I'm not talking about breathing here into your chest. It's like deep belly breaths. Because if you breathe into your chest, 
it causes you to to trigger your fight, flight and freeze mechanisms and it can trigger a panic attack um, and you can feel like you're hyperventilating which can make you feel even more scared and, and worried and stressed. So it's deep, deep breaths down into your stomach and you can actually put your hands on your stomach and actually feel it rise and fall. Um, what I quite often do as well is, for me, it, I can feel when I'm grieving, I can feel a knot or a pain in my body. And for me, it's about breathing into that space almost to try and loosen it so that it can then move through. Um, the other thing I find that really helps me is to get outside and to exercise, to do some form of movement. I think, again, that this is due to the energy in the body and the sort of feelings. At times, I don't feel like moving. <laughs> At times, the only thing, I feel so exhausted and tired, I just want to lie down and not move ever again. But I do know that even if it's a gentle walk or um, at home, you can do sitting yoga if you're not able to walk or you can do jumping jacks if you're more sort of physically able. Um, there's all sorts of movements you can do. And what I've noticed is when I'm feeling that really intense emotion, then there's no space to appreciate or do anything else. Um, but by breathing into it and being present with it and allowing myself to experience it, it shifts and passes, and then I'm able to have space to be more accepting, I suppose, of what is happening. And something else I wanted to share with you as well that I've noticed is that quite often when we're in pain, when we're hurting, we, we want to lash out or blame somebody else or project it onto somebody else. And the same can be true of grief. Um, in the situation I'm in at the moment, this person that I love very dearly is overseas. And um, because of the way that COVID is and the lockdowns and everything else, there's very little chance that I'm going to be able to get there. Um, and I could be really angry about it. And I think if I didn't do the processing that I've shared with you, I think I most likely would be. Um, but as it is, I, I'm just not because there's no point fighting the reality of the way the world is at the moment. I am rationally, I'm not the only person going through this. But I know that as <laughs> as I go through it, it, it is very personal and, and very particular to me. And, and it could be very easy to get cross with everything external to me and project it onto that. But doing that would stress me more. It would hurt those around me. It would cause me more pain to be able to be doing that. And, and it wouldn't it wouldn't get me anywhere. Um, it wouldn't change the circumstances. It wouldn't make it easier for me to travel. Um, it just, it wouldn't help in any which way, shape or form. So just be observant as you go through your grieving process of when you start externalizing the pain inside of you and projecting it out onto the world. And when that happens, try to make some time and space. Try to get out of your head because when we externalize something, we we create all these thought waves and these thought processes where we sort of churn it around and try and organize it and try and bring yourself down into your body. And you do that just simply by focusing on your breathing and then focusing for me, what I would do in this instance is I would focus on where I felt the pain in my body and then I would breathe into it like I've shared with you before. And this process doesn't change what's happening. Um, but it does make it more manageable. It doesn't stop me from being emotional. It doesn't stop me from being sad, but it does allow me to live my life at the same time as feeling those feelings. Um, what I've noticed is if I don't make time to feel those feelings and breathe into them, that I become very de-energized and really, really heavy and everything becomes a struggle. So what I found by doing the breathing, by allowing myself to feel the emotions, is that that doesn't happen. Um, I might have moments of it, um, but because I'm breathing and releasing and allowing, those things, that energy shifts quite quickly. And, and then in a couple of hours or the next day, I'm suddenly feeling much more energised and much more able to do things. I suppose <laughs> I'm hoping that what I've shared with you is enough. Um, it's what I'm doing at the moment and I hope that in some ways if you're going through grief of any kind, um, whether it's as I've said a loss of job, the loss of someone you love, the loss of your freedom, the life that you've known, whatever it is, that what I've shared will help you in some way. 
Um, I have lots and lots of resources and courses and things like that. The links to that are all in the show notes below. Um, I hope you have a fabulous week and so much love from me to you. Bye bye.